Hey everybody, it's Gauntletx, and welcome back to some more Magic Green, and today we're going to be playing another Arena Cube Draft. Without further ado, let's get into the pack one, pick one, where you can really take whatever kind of incredibly spicy card you want. We have Shieldred and Essica's Chariot for just phenomenal mid-range threats, these four drops that provide insane stat lines for the mana cost. We've got a board wipe with Extinction Event. We've got some really good finishers with like Vorinclax and Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. Uh, with what I've been playing lately, a ton of Grixis. We've done Boros Aggro, we've done Rakdos Aggro. Have not done a ton of green, and I do think Eska's Chariot's one of the strongest cards in the cube in terms of the stat line for the cost, so I'll go for the Eska's Chariot here. Um, if I weren't really caring about variety at all, I might just take Shieldred again here, uh, but I've played a ton of black so let's grab Eska's Chariot, see if we can head into green today. All right, pack one, pick two. There's a couple more of the best green cards in the cube here. The Great Henge is going to cost a ton of mana, but if you have a good amount of creatures on board, then it becomes really cheap, and it's a fantastic card draw engine that also gains life through the game, dumps a bunch of mana out for you. Titania's Command is a solid green finisher, getting two counters onto all your creatures and getting two more creatures to throw those counters on. Courser's great for some more lands, and Inscription gives you removal in green. I think their Great Henge is the best of these green spells to go with our Chariot, and I think I'm going to take it here. Uh, we could go off color for like Wandering Emperor, an incredibly powerful Planeswalker. It's my favorite of these Planeswalkers in the pack, and my favorite non-green spell, but stick to green here. Grab the Great Henge. Pick number three now, we've got Utopia Sprawl, which is maybe just a personal favorite of mine. I don't know if you're supposed to take it this highly, but I really love my one-mana mana dorks, my one-mana mana ramp in general. And this, I think, is a little bit better than just, like, a Llanowar Elf or something, a one-mana one-one one that taps for green. Because it's going to tap for a mana of whatever color you need, and it's a lot harder to kill than a one-one on the board. Basically, everyone's going to be running removal that can kill creatures. Not everybody's going to have main deck removal to just randomly kill an enchantment, so really like the one-mana mana ramp of Utopia Sprawl. I think it's the least replaceable card in here, even though Jugan Defends the Temple and Oracle of Moldiah are both quite powerful as well, as are some of these off-color options like the one-sided board wipe of Settle or the uh, reanimator spell of Sarah Paragon. All right, pick number four, we've got more mana ramp with the Intrepid Paleontologist. Got main deck artifact enchantment removal with Boseju. Could push into our second color, going for red with Miglaws for a super aggressive creature, or going to white for Wingmate Rock for a ton of stats for that mana cost. I'm pretty happy to stick to just green for now. I like the Boseju quite a bit. It's like main decking a naturalize that costs you absolutely nothing because you just play it like a forest. Most of the time, pick five, we can take a Lotus Cobra and send a massive message. Just stay out of green. There's no green spells in this pack if we take that. But there is a card that I have been monumentally impressed by here. That's Breach the Multiverse. And that's because basically everybody has several incredibly powerful cards in their deck in cube. And this is going to get the best card out of the top 10 of both players deck onto your battlefield which is often like just playing two 7-drop finishers off of the one spell, which is insane, because the kind of 7-drop finishers that are in cube are completely busted cards, like uh, Atali and Nico Bolas, Ugin, stuff like that. So I'm actually going to take Breach here and push towards green-black. Got a Thrag Tusk here for a great green um, resilient threat, replacing itself with a beast there, or we can take Woe Strider. For a cheaper little blocker here to clutter up the board, I think I'll just take the Thrag Tusk. I'm not super excited about Woe Strider. All right. Black is looking decently open. I'm liking the idea of green black here. Maybe splashing some blue for Hydroid Crisis. Pretty awesome X mana draw spell. But we could also take one of these black board wipes like Gix's Command or Languish. Languish being my favorite of those two. Be like green black ramp here. Really focus up on the top end. Kind of like that idea. Take the language here. Go for a Golgari control y kind of rampy deck. And it looks like a great spot to be. There's a Maelstrom Pulse and an Infernal Grasp here. 
think Infernal Grasp for raw efficiency is actually better. It's one mana less and it's instant speed, but it only destroys creatures. The upside of Maelstrom Pulse is this can destroy non-creature permanents too, so it can destroy uh, enchantments, artifacts, and planeswalkers as well. But it is one more mana and it is sorcery speed. I like both of these better than the Preacher of the Schism. That'd just be another creature that might die to her languish. I think I'm taking Infernal Grasp, weirdly. Over Maelstrom Pulse, even though that is a very cool card. Alright, pick 9. There's another finisher here with Vorinclex. That gives us a really high mana value creature to pick up off of Breach. That's a little interesting. Raska. Kind of have to sack lands and draw cards with this. I guess the minus 3 is pretty decent. I think I'd rather just take an Extinction event here, or maybe even Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. We can always play this as a 3 mana 3 3 lifelink in the early game, but it's also a finisher late game. Yeah, Extinction Event or Flesh Gorger here. I'll go for the Flesh Gorger. Pick number 10. Mind Spike, Inscription. I'm not super happy about either of these. I'm just going to start one in the sideboard. Pretty happy about Oracle of Moldiah. If you've got lands on top of your deck, Oracle of Moldiah becomes an incredible card draw engine because you get to play two lands per turn and you get to play the lands off the top of your deck. So you hit a clump of lands and you're like, let me get this out of the way so I actually draw some spells soon. Well, we can try Weak Demonic Tutor. Search the top third of your library for a card put into your hand. I mean, it's more interesting than Cult Conscript. Never tried it before, but it might be okay. All right, take the Woe Strider here over the ram. Black looks pretty dang open, so that is a pretty good sign for us. Take a pile on here for really efficient removal. Could be another Golos Field of the Dead deck here, although we're not going to wheel either of these, so we don't get to play Golos and Field, but we could do one or the other. I like the, just this streamlined two-color Golgari pile we've got going right now, though. I don't really want to try going for more colors with Golos. We haven't been taking any dual lands or triumphs yet. We'd have to start taking them pretty heavily for either of these two cards. But I have played my fair share of Golos decks and Field of the Dead decks, and I do enjoy them. But pile on it is today. Ooh, now we get like the best value creature in this color pair. It's been printed in a long time. Moss Wood Dread Knight. Two mana, three, two trample, and when it dies... You can uh, cast the adventure from your graveyard next turn to draw a card. And if you do that, then it's sitting in exile ready to be cast again. Just keeps coming back, keeps drawing you more cards. Dread Knight is phenomenal. I'm going to take that over. Fable Passage and Restless Cottage is my favorites, but this Nissa is probably good. It's from March the Machine Aftermath, so I've never read this card. Uh, outside when my opponents have cast it. Yeah, so it's like Lotus Cobra. But you can draw elves and elementals. Okay, that's cute, but Dread Knight is definitely better. Pick three. Uh, Mindstone it is. That'll ramp us up a little bit. Rankle's fine, uh, but we're definitely looking pretty rampy here. Mindstone's going to be quite helpful. Pick four. Tranquil Frillback is very main deckable. Um, really, any kind of sideboard card you need. It's life gain against aggro, it's artifact enchantment removal when your opponent has a good artifact or enchantment, and it's graveyard hate, so the flexibility on the card is pretty awesome, to where I will take that over Bushwhack or Stalactite Stalker. Yeah, these don't really go for our current game plan. Back to pick five. Blooming Marsh seems fine. I'm not going to main deck Reclamation Sage, and probably not a very good Gix deck. You want to have a lot of cheap creatures for that. All right, pack two, pick six. Incredibly efficient interaction with cutdown. Workshop Warchief's a great top end threat, but I really want to make sure I have enough cheap removal spells. And currently, it's just Infernal Grasp at two mana. Pile on at four, which is pretty expensive. Yeah, we've got plenty of random dorks, but not a lot of removal. Got the one of board wipe and a pylon and a grasp. Yeah, I need cutdown here over Warchief. Cultivate is also solid, even if you're not five color. It is. A two for one, you're drawing two lands, one into play, one to your hand, but not quite as exciting to me as cut down here. Just making sure that we can deal with our opponent's threats. 
Pick seven, Pelt Collector, if we want to be aggressive. Life of Shirozama, the better defensive card. Just gain four life and get a two three off of this. If our opponent has one toughness on creatures on board, it's even better. Couple of removal spells. Could try to ramp into a crater hoof, but like. I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna have that many creatures on board and eight mana is a ton. I guess breach the multiverse crater hoof is kind of hilarious. You know what? It's probably wrong, but breach the multiverse into crater hoof is like the funniest thing imaginable, so. We'll see if we can get that combo going. Uh, Forsaken Crossroads for fixing is probably what we're supposed to take. There's a bunch of great cheap creatures here, though, like Briarbridge Tracker is probably the best one for this deck, being a value play. Drawing us a card, even if we board wipe it away to a Languish or something. The other ones are just better at attacking and getting early damage in. I really want this Tracker, but I think I have to take Forsaken Crossroads. Get a green-black land here, whichever color we need. Take a Starving Revenant, I guess. It's on color. Take a Deadly Dispute. I'm running that in the side, though. We don't have good expendable stuff for that. I actually have a pretty good creature count. Inscription might not be terrible. Put it back in for now. Alright, I don't think I'm playing any of these, but maybe we'll splash in one of these, too. These multicolored cards. We'll just take the Werewolf thing. A lot of stats for the mana cost. Four mana for two two twos, and you gain two. If it flips, it's a four four that deals two to a player or planeswalker and two to a creature. If it flips, it's pretty crazy. Probably not playing Mutavault. I don't really want colorless lands in here. It's Reclamation Sage. Guess we can run it for now. But I think Tranquil Frill back is just way better. All right, pack three, pick number one. We've got Explorer for ramp. Actually, Key to the Archive is really sweet ramp. Yeah, it mana ramps us, and it might even find a win condition. It can find Approach for a win condition. It can find Board Wipes like Day of Judgment. You can find Time Warp, Counterspell, Demonic Tutor. There's a lot of really good cards you could find off of this. And it's mana ramp, so take key to the archive here. Maybe wheel explorer would be a fun one. Or the uh the Vivian, the planeswalker there. Alright, here's another board wipe, the meat hook massacre. Also murderous cut. That's what I'm interested in here. Meat hook massacre or murderous cut for sure. Could try to get coma in here, but we need to start playing a lot of blue sources. I've got a drowned catacomb right now. Coma is quite the ramp finisher. But we gotta get some blue in here. I guess key helps with that. Key can tap for double blue. Utopia Sprawl can be blue. Maybe Wheel the Sanctum. That's interesting to me. I think a second board wipe still goes a really long way here, so... If we wheel it, I'll take it, but... If not, we can happily just take like a Murderous Cut or Ophiomancer or something. Pack three, pick three, Overgrown Tomb looks awesome. Liliana's a pretty dang strong card. But a lot of mana. We have Breach the Multiverse, Flesh Gorger, and Behemoth for our ramp finishers right now. I think I'm doing all right. I think I can take, spend another pick on a land here to get things going consistently mana-wise. Take Lana Worlds here because it's all small stuff now. Yep, take Lana Worlds for the ramp. Okay, go for the throat, more cheap interaction, or we could take a mid sized creature like Gear Hulk. This is a lot of stats for the cost, it's pretty beefy. Love Struck Beast is also pretty beefy for its cost. Okay, we've got Grasp cut down, cutting abundance, I think. No, I still want Go for the Throat. I want all the interaction. Here's Incubation Druid for more ramp. Could do Massacre Worm too, which is pretty awesome in the right matchup and doesn't really do anything in the wrong matchup. We play against Control, this is just a 6-5. But if we play against a really aggressive deck, it might kill a few creatures when it hits the board. 
trade our opponent for some life, which is pretty cool. I still think I'm taking a mana dork over it. Pick seven. Timeless Witness is a pretty good value play, but so is Tenacious Underdog. You keep blitzing this and drawing cards every time you do. I kind of like the Graveyard Recursion value, maybe. I think I'll probably cut either of these, but I think Underdog's more likely to get cut. Another Mana Dork. We get Elvish Mystic in here, too. Let's go. Now, Urborg Scavengers is just a ton of stats for its mana cost. Take Automaton. It has to survive a whole turn cycle. It has to stick on board till your next upkeep, but really powerful ability if it does. Now that I did get two one mana one ones to tap for green, I'm less interested in the explorer I was talking about earlier. I'd rather just take the scavengers. All right, coma didn't come back, but murderous cut did, so I'm happy with that. All right. We're just a Golgari pile of stuff. I like Vivian Reed in a pile of stuff. Dig for creatures every turn. It's actually a pretty good Storm the Festival deck, too. Got a lot of three to four mana, just chunky permanence. Yeah, Storm the Festival is actually kind of a sweet card to ramp into for this deck. Toski could be fine. Scooze is also good, though. Take the scoos. Now a gear hulk for a big old threat. And we get the massacre worm. Might have to cut it just because triple black's pretty hard. But I could see play here. Yeah, we're just Golgari pile the deck. It looks pretty fun, looks pretty cool. Excited to see how we're gonna build this one. Alright, we're at 51 cards. We gotta cut 11 here, which is quite a bit. 17 creature count. We've got Bastion, that's also a creature. Chariot, that's also a creature. I guess that's it for non-creature creatures. Not actually a ton of creatures in this deck. Um, so I don't really like Bastion here. We're not really a token deck, and we're not really sacking a bunch of stuff to drain life. I think it just doesn't really make sense in here. Eska's Chariot is still just massive for its cost, so I think we're leaving that in the deck. To cut some more creatures here. One mana mana dorks. One mana mana ramp is significantly stronger than two mana mana ramp. We didn't end up with a million really expensive things in this deck, so I kind of like. I feel like with Elvish Mystic, like Land War Elves and Utopia Sprawl, we're doing pretty good on the ramp, so we might not need two mana ramp like Incubation Druid and Mindstone as much. So we could cut one of these, one or two of these maybe. That's a potential cut. Still really like the Dread Knight, the Scavenging Ooze. Three mana. Scavengers is probably just our best three drop. This card's just been pretty gross. It's basically a three mana, three, three at worst, and it's going to gain all the abilities of creatures and graveyards over time. So flying, lifelink, hexproof, indestructible, all that good stuff if there's any great abilities in grave. But like a three mana, three, three that attacks as a four, four the first time. It's a big stat line. Whoa, Strider's great at blocking for us. Reclamation Sage. I think Frillback is just a much better version of that kind of effect. Uh, so we've already got that base sort of covered by the Frillback. Rather not run the 2-1 for 3. Just for more of that. Starving Revenant is weird. I mean, it feels just slow and inefficient for a cube. Because I remember this not even being an insanely impressive card just in Lost Caverns of Ixalan draft in the first place. It was one of the less impressive rares. Like, it was still a rare. Still better than most of the uncommons, but just not that crazy. So I'm not super into that one. Uh, Oracle of Moldaya, again, similar to the two-mana ramp cards. Like, we didn't end up being a full-on insane ramp deck here, right? Because Flesh Gorger, we can play for three mana. And when you're looking at things that cost more than six, there's only three cards here that cost more than six mana, one of which we can cast for cheaper because we'll have creatures on board. So it's just two six drops and a seven drop and an eight drop. We don't need a million ways to pull lands out and ramp up and stuff like that. So Oracle might also be a little redundant. Just pretty high mana value ramp there at four mana. Uh, Timeless Witness. It's a fine value play. That's all it is, though. I'm not that excited about it. We could maybe cut that if we want to, if we need to. Uh, five mana, though, I want all my beef, so I want Gear Hulk, I want Thrag Tusk. 
Massacre Worm is not pickable by the Storm the Festival, so there's that. I want to have a lot of cards that this can this can pull out. Want that to be a pretty fun win condition, maybe. But Massacre Worm is still pretty fun, and our mana base is okay. It's not great at hitting triple black. Of like 10 black sources. So half of our lands. Well, no, 10 is more than half our lands. 10 is. Why am I so bad at math right now? That's like two thirds of our lands. Not quite a little bit under that because we'll have 17 lands in here. But by the time we have six lands, we should have three black sources with the way our mana base looks. So I guess we can keep it in. Those kind of mana bases or those kind of mana costs always scare me, though. Triple black. For some reason, the triple green doesn't scare me as much. I guess that's mainly because we have Mystic and Land War Elf, so That's two more green sources than it looks like. But I don't know. I guess we have key for double black or double green also. So that helps with these kind of costs, too. We'll just keep both in for now. All right. Non-creature cards. What can we cut here? Cut down is very efficient removal. Utopia Sprawl is more one mana ramp. Go for the Throat and Fertile Grasp are really efficient removal spells. Inscription, not so much. It's a removal spell you have to wait till you have a big creature on board to cast. Or you have to wait till you have five mana to buff your creature to be big enough to fight. So, not a fan of that. Assemble the team looks cute, but like... I honestly wouldn't even be massively excited about actual factual demonic tutor in this deck, so... Assemble the team is just a way worse version of that. Uh, Meat Hook Massacre, yeah, we'll run two board wipes here. Massacre and Languish. Uh, Pylon Solid Removal, not as efficient as our other stuff, so that could be a cut. Probably not. But Chariot, Key to the Archive, Meat Hook Massacre, Languish are definitely not cuts. Great Hunter is definitely not, Storm Vessel is not, and Breach is not. Alright, did we get at least 10 cards into this pile? Because we have to cut 10 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, oh no. Oh no. Well. I need to cut one more card still. Our creature count is tiny right now, isn't it? Yeah, 12. 12 in an Eskis Chariot. So cut a non-creature. So I guess I have Murderous Cut for removal too. We have four efficient targeted removal spells, two board wipes, three mana rocks, two finishers, and this is another creature. What do we cut here for the final one? I don't want to cut any more creatures, even though the weakest card left in the deck is probably something like Woe Strider, something random like that. I still want a solid creature count with the Great Henge in particular, but also Storm the Festival wants to have a good amount of permanence to pull out of the deck. I mean, maybe we've got enough creatures in removal, we just want a one of board wipe, like just the Meat Hook Massacre. Because this is also like, we get to choose whatever we play it as, so we could make it one-sided in the right matchup once we have our beefier creatures later, just clear out the aggro decks cards for like 4 mana, clear out the 2 toughness and less, but keep our own stuff. Might cut Languish over the Meat Hook Masker and run the Meat Hook Masker here. That seems like a fine way to wrap it up. We'll call it a deck here. All right, here's a look at the final deck list for today, and we're on a Golgari ramp deck. We have tons of one mana mana rocks like Elvish Mystic, Land War Elves, and Utopia Sprawl. Tons of cheap interaction, cut down Infernal Grasp, go for the throat, and murderous cut to stay alive. And plenty of nice little mid-range creatures here to do some blocking. And then once we get to that end game, once we're ramping up a bunch, we've got several pretty fun finishers. We've got the Storm the Festival to slam out multiple creatures off of the one spell. We've got a Crater Hoof Behemoth to just make our entire board completely explosive and just trample over for the kill. We've got Massacre Worm to try to wipe our opponent's board and do a bunch of damage to them. And we have probably the biggest win condition in the cube, which is Breach the Multiverse, 
Each player mills 10, the you then get to play a massive win condition from both players. We get to play our Craterhoof and their Nicobolas, or uh, our Phyrexian Flesh Gorger and their Teferi, or something like that. So, really, really huge win con there with Breach the Multiverse, and looks like this deck's going to be a pretty fun time, but we'll see how it all plays out for us as we head into the gameplay. Alright, here we are for game one with a real slow opening hand. If they're on aggro and we don't mulligan, we lose. Yeah, I feel like I might need to mulligan here since we're not doing anything till turn four. Our opponent is on the play. If they're an aggro deck on the play, this hand never wins. So there's a pretty big risk in, in the keep here. I guess we are on the draw, so maybe we just draw into our cheap spells if we're lucky. I'm just gambling. I'm gambling on this one. Fully admit this is a huge gamble. If we see a mountain or a plains, like, scoop them up. We're on to game two. But our opponent does start with black, not the most aggressive color ever. And it's a green-black mirror match. Okay. So ramp mirror. We should be fine to play nice and slow starting this off. Nothing engraved for Urborg scavengers yet. That's a little awkward. Oh, it really is the mirror match. They've got the Dread Knight and everything. All right, sad Urborg scavengers is sad. But key to the archive in a storm the festival means we're going to have a big board pretty quick, even if we're on the draw. Ooh, Garuk. God, Garuk is so good when it clears out a 2-2. Two -two. That's filthy. If the scavengers was a 3-3, three -three, that Garuk would be pretty insignificant. But wow, is that Garuk a nightmare for us? Okay, get a Doomblade to hand. I imagine we gotta do that here. Next turn we're gonna storm the festival. So we ditch a Gear Hulk or a Thrag Tusk. I'm gonna need the life gain, I think. I'll ditch the Gear Hulk. We just wanna flood the board with as much stuff as possible so we can storm the festival into Thrag Tusk into Crater Hoof. And then maybe Crater Hoof for the kill, trample over all the death touching wolves. I can handle this just fine. You know, I am only one man away from Crater Hoof, thanks to Q the Archive. It's pretty interesting. Ooh, that's such a good draw. Because now I can storm the festival and still have removal up. Because it's so efficient. Well, these are not really the permanents I wanted to see. Eska's Chariot's decent. I guess now I get to hold up Doomblade instead of Cut Down. Yeah, this is pretty good blocks here, actually. We're doing fine. Pretty good blocks. And they're green-black. They can't counter a Crater Hoof, so... If we stabilize to where we're, like, we're blocking with 4-4s and a bunch of 2-2s and stuff... I can sit here for a while and really make sure that the board stays wide enough that Crater Hoof just kills them. Alright, so they're gonna like double removal spell the cats. That's unfortunate. Oh, that's bad. Well, we'll see if they get the shield counter. If they don't get the shield counter, then... Oh, please don't. Please don't destroy Key to the Archive. Oh, no. Yeah, I forgot that can naturalize, too. So they just blow up Key to the Archive, and that's GG. But they might... They might have poor threat assessment here, and they might blow up Eska's Chariot. I would be very surprised. Yeah, no. Titans GG. They just got to ramp to their big thing a turn sooner because they were on the play, so they have the mana a turn sooner. Dang. Yeah, that's, that's game ending. R.I.P. There goes the game plan.
Unless I top deck two lands in a row and don't die somehow. Till the end of your next turn? Jesus. So they're still allowed to cast it during their next turn? They don't even have to do it this turn. Ay, ay, ay. So I'll just take it. About to gain five here. We did top deck a land. Even if I do hit Crater of Mana next turn, it's nowhere near lethal, is it? Plus three, plus three trample. No, that's five, eight, plus eight. 16 plus 5. I guess that is lethal if they completely tap out and we don't die. We can trade Eska's Chariot off on blocks here and still have just as many attackers next turn. Okay, maybe... Maybe they completely tap out, and we just play a Crater Hoof and attack with three creatures to kill them, because Crater Hoof is crazy. Yeah? No. Oh. Okay. Okay. If I top deck a basic land... Doing stuff and things. Eleven life. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Go to two. Kill them on the crackback. As we cut down the paleontologist here. Or they might tap to draw the card, in which case I don't even have to cut down. And then I can cut down the wolf instead. The wolf token they get off Garut. Okay. Well, we cut that down because that's three toughness. I guess they could minus with Guruk and get something that can't die to a cut down. Instead of plusing with Guruk. So sure for oh it goes to hand never mind for some reason i thought the minus was like a birthing pod where you get a creature with one higher mana value onto the board but no you just get one to hand okay get the death toucher okay top deck a land and we win oh oh my god Eight plus eight, sixteen plus five is twenty one minus one, twenty damage. That's twenty damage. Oh, my God. That was not fair and balanced magic. We were losing the whole game. Well, that's not true. That's not true at all. We were actually pretty uh, pretty even when we had our mana rock. When they blew up the mana rock, though, they were super winning. Uh, but I guess just hard cast a crater hoof, and that is so much damage out of absolutely nowhere. Right, they're like, there's no way I die on the crackback. Well... Crater Hoof, because it has haste, just gave us eight 
and plus three plus three to both of these so eight plus six 14 more damage than they thought they were going to take we just got 14 more power on that board attacking them than we had the previous turn god that is a crazy magic card no wonder that thing costs eight mana well steal victory from the jaws of defeat there don't really think we earned that victory, but Craterhoof Behemoth sure did, and we are 1-0 heading into game two. Here we are for game two with a monocolored hand, but honestly this hand can compete on monocolored. We draw any land and we woe stride or scry towards the green source. I'm going to keep it. No matter what lands we're drawing into, we've got multiple cheap pieces of interaction to stay alive. And we just need to draw one land, any land, in the first three turns because we're on the draw to get our first threat on the board. So I think this is actually a pretty reasonable keep. We've got a Meat Hook Massacre coming up as well. Our opponent starts with a Triome, though, so they could very much be pretty multicolored, pretty slow, grindy kind of deck. Start with a Deep Root Wayfinder. There's the green source right there. Let's... Um... Just go for the throat, that thing, I think. So they don't get their surveils and their free lands into play. Plus, I have kind of an abundance of removal. I think I can afford to do that. This I don't need to immediately kill, but I could, since it is ramping them. I think I'd rather hold off and have that die in the middle of a Meat Hook Massacre later. We just remove whatever it casts with Grasp and Cut for now. Search for Ascanta. That is it. Find a cut down. Okay, cut down I might just cash in. I should have scribed this go to way to hit land four. That was loose. Because land four is really important here to cast the Eska's Chariot. Although I might have kept the cut down on top. Because it is nice to clear out the visionary. I mean, trading in the visionary is fine too. We'll offer the trade. If they don't want to take the trade, then we'll definitely cut down. Alright, so they feel they need the mana dork, so we'll kill the mana dork. Unless they've got the two mana counter spell, they do not. Alright. I will sacrifice this goat. In classic, classic human fashion. Like witch trials and that stuff. Slaughter the lamb and sacrifice the goat. It's going to be sad. Sacrifice another creature? Ah, uh, I miss when cards could sacrifice themselves. Mm, that's very sad, but we cannot wait on that. Alright, well they two for one us with this, but I can just grasp that or meet a masker it. Let's see, it's three damage. I don't even need to kill it right now. All right, cool. We got the chariot mana. And if anything happens to our poor little cats, then I will be sad. But we will massacre to avenge them. Baral's expertise, that's real good against tokens. Now they get to cast something for free, key to the archive for free. That's pretty good. If they have like a breach of the multiverse or something, it is over for us. Because they have the mana now. That free key to the archive. Whoa! They had the mana for coma and they discarded it? I don't imagine we're winning this game, then. <laughs> if our opponent's just like, yeah, no, I don't need Coma. I could cast this Gigantic Serpent, but I don't need it. 
Like, oh, okay, so we're going to get Breach the Multiverse, and they're going to put it onto the board from the grave? Primeval Titan? They just wanted to Primeval Titan Field of the Dead? They don't even have Field of the What? They definitely, because Key to the Archive, they had the mana for this thing. Okay. Uh, well, it's Infernal Grasp because I could murder Scott for one mana if I need to. Although I do want to escape this Woe Strider, so these two competing for exiling cards from Grave is kind of awkward. Because this wants to exile four to come back from Grave, this wants to exile cards to be cheaper. I know 88 ways to defeat you. Pick one. You know 88 ways to defeat you? What? She knows 88 ways to defeat me, she says. So rude, Narset. Well, I know one way to defeat you, and that's all I need. And that is to murders cut my own Thrag Tusk, because our opponent's completely out of cards now? Then I just send Chariot at Narset and create another 3-3? Three, three? Yeah, why does every Planeswalker have to be monumentally arrogant? I guess they've got the the commit memory combo with Narset on board, so they'll have a fresh grip, and I just shuffle my one card in for one card. Yeah, that is sad. Okay, they do win. Oh yeah, Eska's Chariot takes four to crew. I always forget that. Well, I can put them to super duper low then instead, since Narset already did her thing at this point. Okay. Cast your 5,000 cards and kill me or you shall die. Maybe. Maybe they'll Infernal Grasp one of my creatures. Well, that makes up for discarding the Coma earlier. <sighs> I mean, we can scoop now. They shuffled Coma Time Walk back. That's very lucky, I would say. Literally the two best cards they could have hit together. I still don't think I'll ever understand why they discarded Coma earlier. Like, maybe they had Narset and Commit to Memory, but at that point you would just discard Commit to Memory and cast Memory from Grave. Great, now they have the Great Henge to gain life. Well, if they don't kill our Massacre Worm, then every time they sacrifice a Serpent for Coma's ability, they lose two, so... I, I could still punt it away right now. <sighs> That's even more life gain. Great Henge and Life True Mazawa. I guess I could redraw Meat Hook Massacre. They have tapped out. Yeah, if I redraw Meat Hook Massacre, they're still very dead. That's about it, though. Infernal Grasp is definitely something. Kind of have to kill their life linker here. I mean, that's something, but it's not It's not the win. I think the only win is genuinely just wiping their board here with Masker Worm still out. 
Because now, I mean, I go to combat. I could declare an attack with Masker Worm, but then they give Coma Indestructible and just lose two life by sacking a Coma's Coil. So I could crew Eska's Chariot here. Tapping both these. That goes there. It's there. Actually, it's a thing. Well, no. Now they block Eska's Chariot with Coma and they chump block Massacre Worm and go to two. This opens them up to the misplay, though, of trying to give Coma Indestructible. If they... If they block Massacre Worm with Coma and give Indestructible, they're dead. Okay. They didn't misplay. Maybe I should have held on to the Infernal Grasp and tried to trick them with it, but then... No, then they get lifelink blocks going. Wow. They redrew Blue Sun's Twilight too? Did they draw any cards they didn't already cast? Or was it just all the greatest hits? 679, 12, and 12, that's not dead. All right, well, that was a frustrating one. I think we played it out about as well as we could. Our opponent made some weird loose lines early, but then just had incredible draws off the memory. So what are you going to do? One and one it is heading into game three. All right, triple black card and double black card in the opener is not really keepable. This is... And it's got the mana to ditch a land here. Actually, ditch Poseidru. So we might redraw that later if we shuffle our library with a Fabled Passage or something. Ooh, turn one Beaumont Courier. I don't hate cutting down that immediately, but they're not going to sacrifice it till it's got a few cards under it. Luminarch Aspirin. All right, well, that's a much better target for cut down. Cut down. Scoos. Scavenging Ooze and Urborg Scavengers competing over the graveyard is a little bit awkward. I mean, this trade's fine with me. Alright, stop them from drawing three more cards later. Jewel Mine Overseer. This is one of the really busted alchemy cards, right? Yeah, put seven Seven Dwarves into their deck that all draw a card when they hit the board. And they draw extra cards every single turn. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card you can play at this turn. Yeah, that thing is insane. So is Eska's Chariot, though. Oh, Selfless Spirit is the hit, so they can give the Jewel Mine Overseer indestructible if I do find removal for it. Seasoned Pyromancer. Wait, so they're not playing the Selfless Spirit. They're just going to let it stay exiled. Interesting. Goodbye, Selfless Spirit. Dang, did not hit a land for the Gear Hulk. 
Gear Hulk was pretty exciting to me. Oh, well, trade it up. Like these trades on board are pretty good for me, getting their card draw engine off the board. And if they don't trade, then I just keep making our board bigger and bigger. They don't trade. Cool. Oh, this thing can get haste. That's fine. I probably didn't want to send it in just as a 3-3 anyway. Trade with these two. I mean, that would have been okay. Yeah. I forgot about the haste. I should have done that pre-combat. Just sent that in. Trade with Pyromancer and the Elemental. Would have been an okay trade. Can they play? Yes. But they can't discard this. They have to discard it from hand, right? Channel, discard it. Yeah, you can't discard it from exile. So they just missed another piece of value since they played a land from hand that turn. Instead of the Agonjo. All right, goodbye, Orborg scavengers. I deserve that. I missed an attack with it. Oof. Well, we really want manas. If we scry a goat away for it. Yeah, that's another card draw engine and mana and a bunch of removal spells. Feels important to try to kill that. Alright. They hit a seven doors. I highly doubt they're going to choose not to cast that. Okay, yeah, there we go. Now they got something off Jewel Mine Overseer. Get double red off Chandra. Cast Ao the Dawn Sky. That's pretty gross. Big flying threat. Does a bunch of stuff when it dies too. Not that that's super relevant right now because it's not going to die at this rate. Land. Beautiful. No more scrying then. That's enough. Okay. Get a couple six sixes, I think. No, I don't want to recruit. I want to attack. There we go. Could you imagine if we made it to Crater of Man in this game? It'd be super nasty. But we really only need Breach Mana to win. If we don't make it to Breach Mana, we're probably going to die, because we're taking five a turn. Like, we're under a pretty quick clock. If we do make it to Breach Mana, this card probably wins the game, because it is nuts. Luris. Uh-oh. Yeah, they get to recast Luminarch Aspirant. That is real good with that AO. Now we're under, like, a three-turn clock. We take six, then seven, then eight, and that's lethal. In three hits. Can block like everything else, but just a six power AO, a seven power AO. And an eight power AO is is very dead. Yeah. Alright. Scry to mana. That ain't mana. Come on. That's mana. One more draw. Well, 
All right, well, we killed Chandra. I have to do a lot of chomping on the ground this turn. We need Breach to do some good stuff, to do well here. We need to get some hits. Unless they just have a bunch of burn in hand, which is possible. Then we're just dead right now. Game four. I have been devastated. All right, here we are for game four on the play. Let's go. Full speed ahead with this mana. We do need to draw into something big to cast, but if we find it, we're going to cast it real quickly. Guess I'm just curving into a 3 3 and beating down. Green black mirror match again? Well, there you go. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Pretty close to Crater Hoof Behemoth here. Minus Stalactite, Stalker. Okay. So they're not casting anything. They're going to make that a 3-3 that makes their stuff cheaper. No, I'll just kill that. Still have a murderous cut. Hello, Stalactite, Stalker. I can trade for my Elvish Mystic. About it right now. Ooh. Give me the monies. The dread whispers. Ooh. And a great hinge. Which I'm one mana off from playing before and after the dread knight. Oh, I know it's greatest power among creatures you control. Okay. What's the other card that I always get mixed up with great hinge? Atali. Atali is the one that's reduced by the total power you have. Okay. Well, I will draw another card then. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six. One land and we breach. Oh my god. Hey, Pelucranos. Oh, one land and we breach! We. That's all I, that's all you have? What do I have? Oh, I've got Flesh Gorgy. Um, that's kind of a sad breach from our opponent, but whatever. I got a Flesh Gorger. The cruelty of Gix. Don't do it. Don't do it. No. They did start it on chapter one. Goodbye, Crater Hoof. Oh, and we would hit land eight because <laughs> they did that. What does this do? Discard X. Exile the top X from opponent's library. You can play lands, cast spells for free. I don't want to discard the Great Henge. That's not a thing I'm going to do here. Okay, sure, and I just murders cut the 6-6 six, six and attack with everybody. I think they're still dead. Yeah, they can't block Flesh Gorgers. That's 10 on board still. 
even if they make me discard Crater Hoof, but it would have been so much damage with Crater Hoof. It would have been so funny. Well, we had a pretty insane curve. Our opponent had some of the more, more some of their more mediocre draws, probably. Not much to say there, just really how the, the cards lined up. We are two and two now. Heading into game five. Alright, here we are for game five. We've got both our colors. We do need to find a second black source, but we don't need to find that until we need to board wipe. I will scry. Keep a go for the throat here. Because we're seeing red from our opponents, so they are probably somewhat aggressive. There's the young Pyro, and I am happy to have a go for the throat right on time. Mono red, but no turn three play is very surprising. There's the second black source. Here's the three three scavengers. Town Razor Tyrant on Forsaken Crossroads. I take two damage or I sack it. I'm going to be taking some damage because I need my mana. There's the Elvish Mystic to cast the Great Henge next turn. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we don't cast it right now. Murderous Cut exiling this go for the throat to kill the Town Razor Tyrant to give my scavengers flying here. Seems pretty sweet. And also just deal with that threat. I guess now Great Henge only costs five. Because Scavengers is bigger. If they kill the Scavengers, then Great Henge is just trapped in our hand. But I imagine if they had removal for it, unless they just top decked into it, they probably would have killed it sooner. Maybe not. Maybe they just really wanted to play the dragon first. Yeah, they are reading over the scavengers, so... Now would definitely be a time for it to get blown up. Elder Dragon War. They can kill my Elvish Mystic, or they can just spit out a flyer. It's a read ahead saga, so they choose whatever they want to do. They do want to kill the Elvish Mystic. Um, I guess I can sack this now. Wait, one, two, three, four. No, I can't, because I just lost my Elvish Mystic. Uh, decline to sack it. Ooh, Flesh Gorger. I will have the mana for that after I have a Great Henge down, but not until then. Cool. I mean, Urborg Scavengers might just take it all the way here. There's two more hits and the Scavengers gets there. Should be pretty hard for Red to kill it. Ooh, white, though, can definitely exile it. Or just, like, destroy a creature with power 4 or greater. Plenty of ways in white to kill this. They are Boros. That's the surprise. That's why they did not have a turn 3 play. Mural Shield of Argive. Okay, well, let me gain my life here, because I can't use this during their turn once they have that on board. Okay, I need to keep this to cast the Flesh Gorger. Exile a Murderous Cut here. Make it a 6-6. Six, six. And now... They have to kill my Scavengers and my Flesh Gorger. And now I can sack the Forsaken Crossroads. Hit 
History of Benalia. They've got a lot of threats, but they are not as big as ours. Is Mural Vigilant? No. And even if she were, I could just block. But an 8 6. It's Meat Hook Lethal. Meat Hook for 4. Clear out all their blockers. That's 1 2. A 6 damage on our board. Plus, Meat Hook deals some damage to them. No, that's when our creatures die. We might Meat Hook from four here. It's dead on board. We'll see what happens. Then they can't just go Chomp and double block Chomp. And they can't target the Flesh Corger because they die to its ward. So they can kill Scavengers now, but then they take one from Meat Hook and four from Flesh Corger and die. Yeah, they're dead no matter what. Even if they have like Lightning Bolts and Shocks in hand, they're not going to save them because Meat Hook pings them for using them. Yeah, so they are dead. Thanks to Flesh Gorge reward, or thanks to Meat Hook Trigger. Alright. Well, that was just showing off Urborg Scavengers absolutely popping off. Rough game for our opponent. They couldn't find their second color, and they just couldn't find any removal. Nice to see Urborg Scavengers really get to pop off once, because it hasn't been incredibly impressive. It's just been fine earlier, but that was just straight up that one card. Got us close to the entire way there. We are now 3-2, and two, heading into game 6. Here we are for game 6, key to the archive into Craterhoof. I'm a man with a dream. Cut down the goose and slow them down here. Seeing a ramp deck on the other side of the table. Key to the Archive is looking really good for this hand. They are going to get some Wayfinder triggers. If they manage to mill some lands, it's going to be very good for them. Yep, there they go. Solid hit there. Good RNG to start. Oh yeah, their mana's going wild. Ramp deck on the play. Here we are still stuck, not having the mana for key to the archive yet. Yeah. Immortal Sun before we do anything. Well, last time this happened, our opponent was... It was like green-black ramp versus green-black ramp. They got their ramp going first since they were on the play, but we did manage to still win with Craterhoof. Maybe we can do it again here. Oh... Uh, Day of Judgment, in case they play more threats. Drop the Flesh Gorger. Because next turn I play Mask Worm, probably. And I want to be able to get a wide board state for this crater hoof. A lifelink is appealing. Maybe I do just discard the, the key to the archive card. And I really don't know here. I guess I will discard that. Okay, Sentinel. There's a Cultivate. Yeah, some Masker Room still gonna be enough to block everything here. We top deck a land, we just play the Oh sh <laughs> Oh no. Okay. Uh now I kind of wish I had a day of judgment. It's 
So I'm going to take 7 haste damage off the top. Uh, I thought I could take these hits, but now I cannot. Well, we did hit Flesh Gorger mana, so if they don't have removal, the life gain on this Flesh Gorger means we do not die. There's Vorinclex on top. It just hit itself because they surveilled again. Yeah, we know they're playing Vorinclex. I trade Flesh Gorger into Vorinclex. Gain 7, take 8, shoot. Yeah, that was a bad choice. If they didn't have a 7-7 seven, seven haste coming out, I think we could survive without Day of Judgment, but... If I could just Day of Judgment here and then Murders cut the Vorinclex, that would have been just drastically better. I might have punted out of this one. I guess... I can still do this and barely survive. Well, and maybe barely survive. If we barely survive here, then we do just blow them out, kill them if we draw land. So we're just all in on draw basic. Oh. Well, that's a taste of our own medicine. There's no way we survive that. <laughs> okay. All right. Well. Now, even if I kept Day of Judgment, I'm super dead. Because they could have played Crater Hoof Crude Caravan that turn. I guess it wouldn't matter. They play Crater Hoof or Vorinclex or Crude Caravan. I blow that up with Murder's Cut. No, I still would have lived one more turn. But I'd have no permanence on board and they still kill me with the other hasty threat. Yeah. All right. Taste of our own medicine in the end. Probably the most fitting way to end this draft. Go ahead and get ourselves crater hoofed. Four million. Pretty big punt there. I definitely should have kept Day of Judgment, but they had crater hoof and Vorinclex, so we were dead regardless. Would have had to play it out. Um,. Without punting and on the play to win that one. And both of those things happened. We punted and we weren't on the play. So super crushed in that one. Uh, Yeah, pretty fun deck. 3-3 three, three, average run. Worst run we've done so far in Arena Cube. So that's a little sad. Um, Not too much to say about this deck, really. Uh, That was like a super over or under performer. I did really like the idea of just keep the archiving up into these big finishers like Crater Hoof and Flesh Gorge. I think that was working pretty well for us in the most part. I guess we didn't get to do much Storm the Festival stuff, so that was a little sad, but Breach was still great. Great Henge was solid. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't love really most of the mid-range creatures, the Woe Strider, the Frillback, the Scavenging Ooze, the Thrag Dusk, the Gear Hulk. None of these ended up being that exciting to me. Eskis Tray was still pretty good, but... All the middle-of-the-road stuff, I just didn't end up being that impressed by, and it felt like we had kind of a mediocre middle to our deck, but we had, like, a really good start, like, really good cheap mana ramp and really good cheap removal, and then we had really good finishers, but the middle was a bit lacking. I didn't love any of the stuff we were doing in the mid-game, and I think that's where things fell apart a little bit for us, as well as just uh, some loose plays, some rough draws the normal, the usual ways to lose games. So, yeah. I don't love green that much in this cube. I didn't really enjoy all the green cards here. I feel like the best places for the green decks to be still feel like those five color kind of piles. Using green as your main support color for all of your mana fixing and ramp with Utopia Sprawls and stuff. So, that was another thing. I just felt like most of the green stuff in general was a little medium. Outside of, of course, the behemoth and the one drops. So, yep. Don't know if I learned all that much there. It was a perfectly average run. Our mid game wasn't great. And I don't love green as a color in the cube this time around. Probably about all there is to say, really. It's going to be three and three. 2,000 gold and three cards is the reward. Kind of a bummer. Uh, in terms of the prize out here, but still a perfectly average run. And if that's the worst that we do this time around in cube, then that means we've done pretty well all around. So we'll take it. But that is going to end 
today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and members for their support, as well as you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video and you're interested in seeing more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more new recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.